Okay, this is the a valve assembly for a 178 projector. And I'm basically going to go over the parts, O-rings that go inside. Uh, when you have a leak in your 178 projector, is usually the case, you have an O-ring in the tail, and we have a center O-ring, and we have an a O-ring at the end. And this is your firing pin. And these are two O-rings for your bolt. And this is for your plunger inside the barrel of the 178. This is basically when you buy a repair kit for a 178. These are the parts you will receive. Uh, and at this time, I'm going to tear this apart and show you how to tear it apart and put them in and put it back together. Basically what we do, we put the valve assembly in a vise. We prefer if you have a smooth, what we call a smooth face vise. Uh, that's what we use. If you do not have a smooth face vise, we take, you can take a rag, put around the back part, which the firing pin comes out, wrap that around your valve, stick it in the vise, tighten it lightly. You don't have to over tighten it just enough so it will not turn on you. And we have a specialized wrench we use which is smooth to clamp onto the valve assembly. If you do not have them, you can use like a pair of channel locks or uh, water pliers. Again, if you use something with aggressive jaws, wrap a rag or a piece of leather or something around it so you, you basically do not want to put any grooves in your valve assembly. Uh, you can put that on there. Get around, clamp it, and turn it. Uh, but I'm going to use the wrench that we use. Basically, all you do is put it around the valve assembly, clamp it, turn it. Some of them can be tight, but once you get them going, you basically can take your fingers and finish taking it off. Once you get it loose enough with your fingers, you can take it off. And what you're going to have, you're going to have a two-piece valve assembly with a spring inside. This is what it'll look like when you tear it apart. Okay. Just lay it on a table. And I do recommend there's a little white nylon plunger that fits down in the longer end of your valve assembly. And that's basically what it looks like. And as you can see, the one end is notched out. It's got like a little cone on it. When you put this back in, you want to make sure the cone is going towards the cone part of your valve assembly. It just drops back down in. But while you got it apart, take it out. Just take a rag, clean it off. Make sure there's no dirt, grime of any sort on it. And like I said, you can put it back on. To take the O-rings off, we have uh, basically what it is is a piece of wire, and we sharpen the point on it. Makes it a lot easier. You get under your O-rings, you can pop them right off. And basically when you turn these apart, just watch which ones you're taking off of. What you can do is lay them in order you take them off, then when you put the new one back together, you know which one goes where. Uh, but basically what I'm going to show you is the smaller, fatter O-ring goes in the center, the center piece of your valve assembly. And there's a little notch in there that fits into. Your bigger O-ring goes in to the cone slot. You can see this slot right here. That's where it fits into. Okay. And when you get those two on, take the spring, make sure your little piece of nylon uh, plunger is down in there. Put the spring in. This, this is the firing pin, what we call the firing pin for a better word. 
That goes in the top portion. Just drop it in through the hole. It comes out through the hole here. And that's your firing pin. Then take the two and marry them back together again. There's a little bit of tension there, not a lot. Basically what I do is screw them as tight as I can with my fingers. And again, you go back to the vise, not over tighten it. Again, the reason you don't see a rag or anything in my vise is because I got the smooth face. Take, tighten the two pieces back together. You don't have to over tighten them and make them snug. And your valve assembly is back together again. The only thing we have to do is we put the one bigger, skinnier O-ring goes into this groove. There's a complete rebuilt valve assembly for a 178. Okay, at this time we're going to show you how to tear down a 178 projector to repair your valve assembly. If you have a leak, uh, the main thing I stress, open your bolt up, check in, make sure you have no darts in it. Uh, actually dry fire the projector to make sure you have all the air out. Even though it leaks, you could have uh, some air left in there. Uh, and the reason being is once you start tearing apart, if you have any air, it's going to put pressure on the valve assembly, which is going to make it more difficult to get out. Uh, but at this time, the first step would be using a Phillips head screwdriver. There's one screw underneath the stock by your trucker assembly. Take that screw out. Open your pump handle a little bit and your stock will come off. Okay. The next process would be the Phillips head screwdriver again. You got two Phillips head screws. Again, you have one Phillips head screw on this side and one Phillips head screw here. Both screws must come out. one screw out and what I usually do there's going to be a little pressure there's a spring in here I usually take my finger and hold here and in the back of your uh, trigger take the next screw out with that being out the whole assembly comes out and what it does this screw here, you don't need to take out yet. This is slotted to fit underneath that. You pull the whole assembly out, along with the spring. Your next step would be, it's uh, a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench to take off your bolt handle. Unscrew your bolt handle, and at this time, this, there's a metal block that actually goes up and hits your firing pin. That comes out. The next step would be using a 11 millimeter socket or wrench. Open up your handle all the way and take this bottom screw out. This screw here is actually what holds in your valve assembly. And when you have that screw out, basically what it looks like, what I usually do, is once I got everything removed, is take the handle, make one pump, and that helps push back your valve assembly. If it don't come back, Clear to the back where you can get a hold of it with a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, sometimes you can, if it comes all the way back, you can just reach in and pull it out. This particular one didn't come all the way back. So the next thing is we have to take the handle off. 
because you have to do that anyway. And what it takes is a 3 16th punch. And the reason you need to punch, you have two pins going through the end of the barrel. Both pins must come out. I usually take the first pin out first, followed by the second pin. Basically what I do is lay it on a table or a workbench where you have a good study service surface. That's one dial pin. Then you take the second one out. There's the second pin. Uh, I will tell you sometimes if you got a lot, a lot of dirt, grime in the holes, they could be a little difficult to get out sometimes. When you have both pins out, your handle actually pulls out. It will pull out of this assembly where you took the dowel pins out. And at that time, you need to slide this rod up to the first hole. And what that does, you might have to tap it a few times. There's actually a cap in the end of that barrel. That's the cap. That cap must come out. That fits in the end of the, your bottom barrel. Then when you get that out, you got to slide this rod back to the second hole. What there is, there's a little pin in there that holds this assembly in. We knock that pin out, which is a little pin, and we pull the handle out. And basically what we're getting to is the plunger, which will be this piece in your kit. You pull this rod out. This is what it looks like. And basically what happens uh, over time, you can get dirt, grime, whatever, oil build up in this plunger and will not give you a good seal too. One thing I want to point out, a lot of people, there's a little hole here in the bottom. That's an air release hole. It's not for oil. I recommend anytime you tear one apart and put them back together is use we use a Hoppies number nine. It's a light gun oil. And basically all I use that for is to get the rubber seals started. Like one drop on each one, that's it. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna get back to valve assembly. It didn't pop all the way out. And what I have, and I recommend anybody use, is like a nylon rod or a wooden dowel pin that you can run down the end of the barrel that you just took those pieces out of, your handle, run it all the way down till you hit the bottom of it. Then you can just push that valve assembly out. As you can see it coming out the back. Once you get it out, you can pull it out with your fingers. And the important part is, when you put the valve assembly back together, that screw hole that we took this screw out of needs to line back up with the second hole. That's what this screws into. It actually screws in when it's inside. That's what that goes into. That's what holds your valve assembly together to make sure everything stays in place. We, I have a little tool here we made in, in the back of this valve assembly is a small hole. We have a tool that will fit into it that we can turn it whatever way we need to. Uh, but I know out in the, the field a lot of people don't have that. Again, when you push that in there, just make sure, sort of use this slot on the bottom as your guide 
to keep that screw hole line right straight up with that. And that will help you tremendously. If you replace the plunger here, basically when you tear that off, that's what you have. Two pieces. And again, this is where Hoppy's number nine, just a little drop, put it around it, start it with your fingers, and they can be tough to get in sometimes. But if you get it started, put it on a table, just sort of work it in. And you might have to take a small screwdriver I have a small screwdriver, real small, and what you can do, as you can see here, this rubber has got to be flat with this metal. You do not want a gap in there. And what you can do is take a screwdriver, push it in, and push down. Work your way all the way around it. You might have to go around it once or maybe twice. It's just like pushing that. Don't push it too hard where you're going to put a hole in the side of it. And when you have it in place, you see the rubber is tight against the metal. It sets in a little groove under there. Okay? One thing, you, if you have an air hose handy, blow everything out. Any kind of dirt, grime. And while you have it disassembled this far, again, take a rod, patches, just run through, just like you clean a normal gun using a, a light oil, then wipe the oil back out. But we have light oil on the rubber. And what we do, we start it in this end. And as you see, there's a slot. That slot stays towards the bottom. Slide it in that. Slide this hole here to match this hole. And the next thing you do is put your handle back on, your pumping handle. Again, as you can see, there's a hole in this rod. Where that goes, you slide in between. And that's where the small pen goes back in. Once you get the pen in, you can slide that down. Just slide your plunger down out of the way. Okay. Then your next step would be to put your end cap back in the end of the barrel. Again, you have a small slot. You have a small slot, then a larger slot. The larger slot goes towards the bottom. That's the only way the two holes will line up together. Most times you can just push it in with your finger. And again, what I do is I take my pen, take the punch and line up. What I do is put it in the first hole. Put the pen in, put the, pen in the second hole, that lines both hose, holes up there. Take your first pen, and while you still have the punch in the second hole, start your first pen. Okay, the next step in the process, this has got to go back in the, the slot. Sometimes what you need to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers, what happens, this part gets spread out a little bit, and you might have a difficult time getting it back in the slot. So you just get it close, take a pair of needle nose, pry it together a little bit, and it'll slide right into place. And once you get that set, take your punch and come up through the bottom. 
that align all your pieces together. Then take your second pin, start it with your finger, uh, which again sometimes it can be difficult, but to get it started you only need just a little bit to hold it in place. And take your hammer, still holding the punch on the bottom with your other fingers. Once you get it started, you can take the punch out. Punch them in and just work it a couple times. That, make sure it's working all right. The next step would be to take your valve assembly and put it back in. Again, using this slot, you use that as a lineup. But again, I just take a little bit of hoppies, any exposed O-rings, just one little drop. Again, don't over with oil. Wipe it off with your fingers. That gives it a little bit of room to slide. <clears throat> Line your screw hole up with your valve assembly. Start it. And again, I have a little tool here, but we hook it in the back. Just keep pushing it in. Sometimes you might have to tap it a little. Line this screw hole up with the second hole. Again, it's very important. You do not want the, the screw to line up with this hole. You want the second hole. When you get it lined up, take the screw that your stock screws into. Start it in with your finger. Don't force it because the valve assemblies are made out of aluminum. So make sure everything's lined up. Don't force it. You'll strip them out. Again, taking your 11 millimeter socket. Snug it. Not over tight. Just snug it. And again, when everything's in place, I can just pull this tool out. Uh, it's a handy tool. It works good. Again, that part, we got the valve assembly back in, secured in place. And basically what we want to do, we're going to go in reverse. The metal block we took out goes in first. Again, if you see, there's a screw hole here. We want to line that up with this slot. Once you line that up, then you can take your bolt handle. Bolt handle screws back in the screw. And again, going back to your 10 millimeter socket, snug it, not over tighten. Push it ahead. Now what you do, the, the spring, as you notice in the back of that piece of metal we put in, there's a hole in it. Okay, this spring goes in that hole. Then in the back of your trucker assembly, there's another hole that the spring goes into. Sort of cock it like that. Get it in the back. Make sure this slot here is lined underneath this bolt. There's a slot here, half moon goes underneath the bolt. Push it in tight. Again, taking your finger, holding it in tight. And your two little Phillips head screws go back in, one on each side. Last step would be putting your stock back on. Again, slide it over. Down in place. A 
snug. Rebuild is complete. Basically, you do it, pump them up a few times. And you can listen to see if you hear any air leaks. You should not. Test fired, and that's a complete 178 rebuild.